Hey guys, okay, so when I posted the video about asking, um, you know, your input on what, you know, some ideas maybe that you'd want to hear about or um, what kind of videos you'd want me to upload, I had no idea that my phone was going to mess up and I had to wait to get a new one. And then I did try making other videos after that and it didn't work out. I didn't have enough time uh, in the spaces of time that I did have. Um, it's pouring the rain out there now. <laughs> but, uh, so, I'm going to try to do one now. Um, there was a couple of comments from two different people that was kind of along the same lines, I thought, anyway. And so, I wanted to do a video uh, concerning a, a certain topic. And um, I just want to go ahead and tell you, I'm not called to be a teacher. Um, I, I know that. Um, and sometimes I wonder... <laughs> really what it is that I'm specifically called to do. I know I'm called to sing and uh, things like that and share uh, testimonies, but I don't know if I have a label for it. <laughs> I've struggled with that for years, to be honest with you. And um, all I know to do is to do what I know to do. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but even if I don't have like a label for it, I just do what I know to do um, that's kind of weird maybe confusing but uh, so here it is I am what I am I maybe have a uh, uh, different approach than other people and might be all over the place as you have probably heard me say over and over but I'm just gonna do what I do so I'm gonna share some experiences with you uh, so the people that commented let me look out the window here Okay, the reason I was looking is because um, if it was my husband, then I didn't want to continue this video <laughs> because I get so distracted and it just totally messes with everything that I'm doing. <laughs> if anybody walks in or whatever, I have to be completely alone if I'm on the phone or anything like that because my mind, I just, I get so distracted. Yeah, that, anyway, that's totally whatever. But, all right, so the, the, the people that commented couple different people. Um, one of you said, um, kind of asking advice about if you live with non-believers and, uh, you know, how how to be a Christian when you live with non-believers. Um, I, I might not have said it completely right, but um, I, I couldn't get on my comments uh, earlier, so I was just trying to remember what I did read before. And then the other person was talking about having friends who are non-believers. So I, I just kind of wanted to um, share some things and, and maybe a little bit of scripture, you know. I mean, that's, the scripture is what it, what God, that's God's word to us and uh, uh, gives us guidance. And I mean, that's, that's what we go by. Uh, sometimes I might not know exactly where to turn at first, um, but I just try to try to give you um, you know, advice if I can, and hopefully you'll be encouraged today. So, um, here I go, and I'm sorry, I'm all, all, all over the place already, but, uh, many of you probably know, if you've, um, heard my past videos, you've probably put the pieces together. Um, I, I did grow up in a Christian home, and, uh, we traveled and sang gospel music. That was my life. When I was 16, we came off the road. My life was totally turned upside down. And uh, it felt like the rug was ripped out from under me. Everything I knew changed. And um, my home, my family was split apart. Um, things were no longer the same as I'd always been used to. Never expected it, especially being a Christian home. Uh, you feel secure in that, um, you know, and uh, the enemy, though, is out to kill, steal, and destroy. I believe, uh, you, you know, we we can say that. I believe the Word of God, and it is true, and uh, this Satan is out to do those things. Sorry, I'm stuttering, but... Um, so, it, it totally flipped everything upside down for me. And um, my, so, what happened was, my sisters and I live with my mom after this point. And uh, my mom, who had always been a stay-at-home mom, uh, she had to go to work full-time. And um, she was still a Christian, but a lot of things changed. Um, she had to go and provide, and she was working so much. Um, crazy hours just uh, that would take up much of her day. She would either get up extremely early in the morning 
um, and then come home and sleep afterwards. Or she would work like the whole, you know, when your day starts till it's supposed to end, pretty much. And so many times I would go to church by myself. My sister, my older sister would, you know, she would go uh, to her, at a different church with her own friends and different things. Uh, we just went separate directions. So I would go to church and I would come back home and my battle was at home. Because even though my mom was a Christian, how many know that, you know, if, if you don't go to church regu regularly um, or, you know, or can't go as you used to go or, or whatever, we become spiritually weak. If you don't surround yourself with believers and get into the presence of God in an environment, um, you know, on a regular basis then you will become spiritually weak. And, and so my mom went through a time that she, she did. She became spiritually weak. And I've been there. We've all been there at some point. And so what would happen is that I would come home having my mind focused and I felt like I was on fire, you know. But the battle, like I said, was at home um, because she was dealing with, you know, these day-to-day -day battles and she was having to work and, and different things like that. She had a lot on her plate, um, but she was still yet weak. And uh, and so I, even though, you know, it wasn't her fault of the place that she was in at the time, um, you know, she was just going through a, a very low, low time, low dry time. And I mean, her life changed, you know. But, but I was having to deal with uh, discouragement, um, just, uh, you know, depression not allowing myself to give in to what was around me and uh and i know even though i lived with you know my mom was a christian my sisters were christians you know i was blessed still yet um but like i said my battle was at home and i know it's different maybe than what you're experiencing oh well, i know for sure it's different um if you live with non-believers but there was a battle, and uh, and there was a, a spiritual war going on, and I was being tugged at, and constantly my flesh would try to rise up, and it was, uh, you know, the enemy would use these things to try to bring me down and try to make me feel defeated and feel like I couldn't walk in the victory. And uh, so many times, you know, I, I would have to make myself, shut myself off and pray and read the Bible and and just sometimes I would just lay on my bed staring at the ceiling, feeling like my life was just passing from me. Like, like just feeling like, you know, so much time was just getting away from me. Um, and, you know, I don't know if I'm even making sense, but um, just trying to get by. Like, just trying to make it. Um, because I'm like, God, I'm doing what I know to do. Uh, but my battle is here, you know. And, I mean, it was just such... A constant pull just trying to get me in a state of depression too where I couldn't thrive in my own spiritual walk with the Lord and uh, you know and like I said my mom had a lot more on her plate and I'm not blaming her um, but there was definitely a war going on and so I would constantly have to go and a lot of times I mean church was my getaway church was my getaway I love going to church I still do and um, you know from because even to this day, I want my home to be like a sanctuary, you know, the place, uh, like a refuge, a place that I can come to and, and my family come to and uh, we can just, we can find rest and peace, you know, and, and we try to create that environment, but many times, um, even now, as a Christian family, a Christian home, even now, I, I can see that the battle is just so intense sometimes. I try to pray and sometimes I can't feel a thing. And I'm sharing with this with you because I want you to know that, you know, even even in a Christian home, it doesn't it doesn't mean it's easy. I don't want you to, to see a picture that's really not there. Um, you know, sometimes um, it seems like I've, I, it's been a while since I've been this transparent, but I need to be. I need to let you know that... Um, 
you know, so many times we look at people's lives, especially on social media, and we think it's perfect, and we sit in our own little world, and we're like, you know, my life is never going to be like that. You know, I wish I had that kind of life. We start coveting. Uh, we start feeling hopeless, feeling like our lives will never be like somebody else's. We start comparing ourselves and our lives to everybody else's. And really, the life that they're putting out there doesn't even exist. And uh, many times, um, you know, I'm not saying that everything is fake. But much of the time, the enemy uses these little things, we don't even realize that we're deceiving other people sometimes by certain things we're posting or, or, or uh, the, the way we put words, you know, out there. Um, you know, even sometimes I've looked back on things that I've said not even meaning to. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm trying to paint this perfect picture of my life because Lord knows I've had my struggles. And I've tried to let you all know that in the past. You know, I have had my, oh, I've got flaws that I, shoot, I have insecurities. I'm still dealing with it to this day. It's a constant battle, and I, I just keep running to the Lord. And I'm like, I feel like the enemy has been on my trail day after day, but I'm still running to the Lord. You know, and I told my church the other night, I said, you know, I, I'm that. that's what I know to do is it, just run. You know, every time I feel like, thrown in the towel. I mean, many times I feel weak and I feel like thrown in the towel, but all I know to do is to keep fighting. Even when I don't feel like it, there's somehow, some way, I know by His Spirit, there's still a fight down inside of me that will not let me give up. And anyway, um, so yeah, I just I just want to let you know, even, even now, I've got a wonderful godly husband. I've got some great stepsons. They're, they're wonderful. I'm very blessed. Um, some people aren't so blessed, uh, you know, to have respect in their home, especially if they're a step parent. Um, I've, I've got two great stepsons. I've got a wonderful uh, two-year-old that's, well, it's very, he's very hyper and <laughs> he's got his own bold personality, but, you know, I've got all these great things. We've got a, a great church and, you know, but still yet, it's not, my life is not perfect. Yes, there's things that we deal with every day. And there's a real enemy out there. As the Bible says, the spirit wars against the flesh. I mean, it's they're constantly pulling at each other, you know. And it's just... So anyway, I, I could go on about that. But first of all, so that's the first thing I want you to know. Is that even in a Christian home, that doesn't make things perfect. Second thing that I want you to know, that does not mean that you should not strive for a Christian home. If you are a young person and you absolutely cannot help your surroundings right now, you may be under 18 and where you are is where you are at, where you have to be. And uh, so, so let me talk to you all for a minute. If that's where you're at, if that's your circumstance right now, um, I, I want to encourage you. I, I'm sorry that you are having to be in an environment like that. But it is not the first time. And let me tell you that God is not shaken. There's many examples in this Bible we could go to. Um, you know, just where people felt lonely. They felt like they were on this walk alone. And we can read the psalmist, you know. And then and then Paul even in prison. I know it's different. But at the same time, let's pull from these things. There's things that we can... Uh, it's like, you know, it parallels with our life. Uh, because of... There, there's some similarities here. And so let's just pull out what we can, you know. But um, I won't go into all that. But I, I just want to say some things. So if you're in that place that you can't help it, you know, first of all, I got to tell you, no matter what they're doing, you are responsible for you, how you respond. You're responsible for your actions. We can't help what they do. We can't help what they say. We can't help how they act. We can't help how they treat you. But what you can help is how you treat them. What you can help is what you say, how you respond, you know, your actions. And if, if it's parents that aren't where they need to be and they're giving you a hard time, they're always, you know, maybe putting you down even and saying, oh, you know, uh, maybe even people call you too spiritual or, you know, well, oh, yeah, well, you, maybe even they, they mock you. Maybe they even put doubt in your mind saying, yeah, well, you're, you're a Christian now, but let's see. Let's see if you keep at it. You know, I don't know. There's so many scenarios we could, we could talk about. We could go over. I, I don't know what your situation is. 
Um, but, but what I want to say is you still have got to walk in love. You still have got to follow after Jesus because, I mean, he's the perfect example. Look at all the people that surrounded him and all the many uh, people that mocked him and put him down and um, accused him. You know, Jesus is the perfect example, okay? And I, I know he was the son of God, but he came down as a, he humbled himself as a, as a servant, okay? As a servant. And he walked this earth as a servant. He was a servant. And he died to himself, okay? Not, not just on the cross, but to his feelings, his affections, his everything that, that us humans uh, struggle with. He was tempted in all ways, in all measures, as we are tempted. It's nothing new how we are tempted. Jesus, Jesus did it. You may say, well, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, he was, you know, all powerful. He was the son of God, you know, and yes, he was. But, but yet he had all the power. But as he came down as a humble babe, humble babe, however you want to say it, I say humble. I can't help it. Um, I know a lot of people say humble. I don't even know the correct way. I guess I need to look it up. Okay. That was a side note, <laughs> but he could have, he could have walked in, in power, but he constantly went to the Father and and called out to the Father and asked him to, to equip him and asked him to give him strength and asked him that his will be done through him. You know, there's so many times, you know, he just he laid himself down for for others and people spat on him and you know, I, I could just go through all that. I, you know this. I if well, I'm sure many of you do. Read about him. Read about him. Get to know him more. You know, uh, read in the Gospels. Read read the red words uh, written in red, you know, that Jesus uh, says. And just get to know him more because he is the perfect example. He laid it out there for us. And uh, we can do this. We can do this. Um, it's not easy. It's not in ourselves. But when we are weak, he is strong. When we are weak. That, that means he's our strength. It ain't our strength. It's his strength in us, you know. And he will allow us. He will give us the capability to do things that we couldn't do on our own. Right? He will empower us by his power uh, to endure things that we cannot endure on our own. Um, when I was at church camp one year. Oh, gosh. I was struggling so bad. Because some of the things I told you about earlier, you know, just the battle that was going on coming home and just felt like I was it was everything it was all that I could do to just keep my focus and uh, I, I wanted to walk in victory but the struggle oh I was being pulled at so hard depression was calling my name you know I just sometimes wanted to many times I, I'm gonna tell you I would lay in bed I already said that but I want to go a little deeper I would lay in bed and just feeling sometimes the hopelessness would come upon me and uh, just feeling like, you know, what really is there for me? You know, I felt like after my family, you know, came off the road as a singing group and after we, you know, every my family split apart and uh, things just, uh, you know, like I said, everything was changed. And I questioned what I was even called to do. If I was, if I was even called anymore, what, what can little old Ashley do? You know, and still yet, what I've had to offer, I just put it out there. And God has taken these weak little moments of mine and he has shown his power and allowed me he has he has given me the strength and the capability to walk through it and overcome it every single time and but anyway uh so at camp i remember calling out to god i cried and i cried on the altar and I just, I finally, it, I, something just hit me. I, I don't know if it, I guess it was the Lord just telling me to, to hush for a minute. In a gentle way, you know. I just stopped crying. I stopped talking. And I looked up. And I, I'm telling you, I, I just felt just this light come down over me. And people may think I'm crazy, but I felt like it was the light of the Lord shining down upon me. His glory came down, I feel like. And uh, I'm going to bring out a scripture here. And 
and I opened up my Bible. I, I got up and I went to the chair in the front row and I got my Bible out. And there was a scripture that I came across. If I can find it. Oh, where's that verse? And it just got a hold of me. Because when I read it, I knew that the Lord was talking to me. Let's see. Oh, I wonder I was in. Let me, uh, excuse me, just a minute. Where'd it go? Well, I just had, oh, I'm almost there. It's in Philippians. Well, well. See, if I could edit this stuff, <laughs> then it wouldn't take me near as long. Well, maybe I'll come across it. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and try to, here we go. Here, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I know I read it before, but that day when, when I felt that light shine down on me, and then I opened it and went to that verse. I seen that verse, and it just it just came out at me. And it was just so powerful in my spirit, the way it, it uh, came up like that. And uh, my eyes started twitching, sorry. <laughs> For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And it's like all of a sudden it hit me, you know, how I'd been trying to do all this on my own. And he was letting me know, Ashley, it is by my power. For it is God. He's working through me. He's working in me. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You know, it's through him, by him, working in me. To will, uh, you know, to do his will and his good pleasure. Let me read a, a, some notes on that. God's grace works in his children to produce, to produce in them both the desire and power to do his will. However, God's work is not one of compulsion or irresistible grace. The work of grace within us is always dependent on our cooperation and response of faith. Now that, that's pretty good because it is up to us if we're going to allow him to work in us because we can wear ourselves out trying to do it on our own. Uh, if you're living in that environment, you know, where you're just surrounded by uh, ungodly people, people who um, are not saved, you know, I have not been in that place um, just carnal minded people um, but I, I still know for every situation this applies you know it's God who will work in you if you allow him to you know it's through him also I wanted to say this I had it and then I switched over this came to me the other day because I was, I was trying to do a video about this and I was going to pull out these scriptures, but I was on the road, <laughs> and I could not read them as I wanted to. Um, so Romans chapter 8 says here, um, before I read it, let me tell you. Here's what came to my mind. If you're in that environment, um, I just wanted to tell somebody. This is what just kept coming to me to tell y'all. You, doesn't matter how much you try. You will never be able to persuade a carnally minded man. They will not be able to understand the things of God. They may, like I said before, mock you. They may, may, may put you down and, you know, imitate it. They may, they may try to do all these things. Um, they will never be able to understand it. It isn't until they receive salvation that their eyes are opened. And then they can comprehend it. But here it says, uh, I'm going to start 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And I could go on. 
But I'll stop right there for a minute. Let me get my little book here. I was going to go to another verse. And um, 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 10. Um, I should have marked my pages, but I just have limited time being by myself. So, um, 2, 14. Let me read one more scripture here. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I talked to the Sunday school class yesterday about this. And, uh, and I told them how I was going to do a video for you guys about this, too. Um, you know, they, like I said, someone who's not saved, they, they cannot understand the things of God. It does not matter how much you try to explain it to them. I mean, it's fine if they have questions, if they're, you know, curious. Um, it isn't, though, until the Spirit of God draws them to receive salvation, and they receive that, that God opens their eyes and then they begin to understand. Uh, but until them, it's just, well, it says here, for they are foolishness unto him. You know, and uh, so anyway, now, in saying all that, I do want to tell you, do not be discouraged at that. But I just wanted you to understand why it seems like it's never getting through to, to, through to them. Um, well, I've tried talking to them. I try to make them see you can't. You can't make them see because they can never understand it. They can't connect it because, like the Bible just, you know, said in in uh, Romans chapter eight, that the carnally minded man, a carnal mind, you know, it, it leads to death. You know, he cannot please God. You know, they they mind the things of the flesh, not the things of the spirit. You know, that's what they're following after. You know, so. Your spiritual mind and their carnal mind, they just don't connect. And uh, and you can't be both at, at, at one time either. So I told my Sunday school class that yesterday too. Um, you know, it, there's some people out there that claim to be so spiritual, but you can't have a carnal mind and be spiritual at the same time. So anyway, that's a different subject, kind of going in a different direction there. But so anyway, but don't get discouraged. I want you to still pray for them because God can use you in that environment if you allow God to work through you and to do of his will and his good pleasure. If you allow him to allow his love to flow through you, walk in love, be love, do love. Go read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 here. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. And I, I won't go on with that because it's going into some other stuff, but um, you know, this, this, that chapter is not just for married couples. You know, it's not just for couples that are about to get married. It's not, you know, just between a man and a woman. This is talking to the church here. If we don't have charity, we don't have anything, you know, and love, which is the same as, you know, charity. That's what it's talking about is a fruit of the spirit. And if we don't have that, then we need to reevaluate. You know, we need to re-examine ourselves and our, our spiritual walk with the Lord. You know, and I, like I said, I've not been in your shoes. Um, I told you my story a little bit. Um, and God helped me to get through that. Um, he can do the same for you. You've got to allow Him to work through you. And sometimes not saying anything is the greatest message you'll ever say. And, uh, you know, because like I said, you cannot convince a carnal-minded man um, of spiritual things. And so you've got to allow the Lord to work through you in love. Be patient. Be kind. Um, so anyway, let me see here. My husband, I don't, that might be him, but I don't know. Yeah, that's him. So um, what I was going to say after this, 
and I, I may get distracted in just a moment when he walks in. But like I said, the Lord helped me to get through that. Uh, I was in that environment until I was 21, I'm thinking. I don't know if I was 20 or 21 when I got married. I can't remember. <laughs> you know, I could do it right now, but I know he's about to walk in. I'm going to get distracted. So, um, but anyway, so I lived in that environment. And, uh, and, and honestly, for me, marriage, man, has taken me to a whole new level. Um, I kind of feel rescued. Not that, like I said, not that my mom was, she was, she's a great woman. You know, it's just that environment was so hard. Um, because sometimes the surviving, uh, when you're in that mode, instead of um, thriving, um, it can be so hard. And it's a press, you know. Um, especially when it, it feels like a camp of people trying to, you know. Uh, but anyway, what I wanted to say is, so that was my rescue. But for you, I don't know when that's going to come. Um, if I hadn't have married, um, you know, if there was a different plan I had had thoughts of moving out. I was going to get, you know, I thought about getting my own apartment. I thought about different things. Um, get, I want to encourage you, when you're of age, not before then, you need to respect, honor, um, and, and do as you're told. Um, you know, you still got to abide by the word. When you're told to do your chores, go do them. You know, uh, let your life show that you're a Christian at home. That's the most important part. It ain't just about going to church. Show that you're a Christian right in your home. Um, it's through love that we can, and honor too, that we can, uh, um, you know, lead others to Christ. And that I was going to say earlier that the Lord can work through us, you know, and and then the Spirit of God end up drawing them. And it, be, it can be because of our lives. And, uh, you know, but pray for them and, and walk in obedience to the Word of God in that environment. Until you, there's a way of escape. Set you a goal. I wanted to say this. Set you a goal. And um, pray about it. Don't do anything without feeling peace of God about it. When you're of age, um, set you a goal. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, don't don't jump into marriage just because it's a way of escape. Don't do that to yourself because that'll, that'll end in a mess for you. Some people do that. Um, unless you feel, you know, the Lord has told you to do that. Um, and has brought you someone. But other than that, um, that's going to end up just in more of a mess for you. Um, but, you know, if you've got a job and when, when you become of age and you can get to your own place and, um, you know, I, the Lord will guide your step one step at a time. I, I don't know the answers completely. Listen, I just try to give my experiences and uh, give some advice in that way. But, just allow him to work through you. I'm telling you, you know, it, things like this don't last forever. You're going to look back. Let me, let me, I'm about to end. You're going to look back, though. And you, I don't want you to have any regret how you acted towards your family members or your friends. I want you to be able to look back and say, I acted as I, acted as I should. I did everything I knew to do. I didn't speak out, and, sorry, something came up on my screen. Don't have any regrets. Like that movie, Facing the Giants, all oh, this comes to me so often. I don't know, you know, if you've seen it, if you haven't, you need to watch it. It's at Lifeway. Um, I don't know if it's on sale right now or not, but anyway, you've got to get that movie or, or go see it or something. Um, it's several years old, but, man, it's powerful. And uh, But on the field when they're they're practicing kind of in training and they have to do the death crawl and the coach gets down and uh the, he's got a blindfold on the the guys uh, you know around his eyes and the guy that's crawling is carrying someone on his back but the coach gets down and and the player he's he's saying I can't go any further you know it hurts it hurts and the coach says I know it hurts but you got to you got to keep going. Don't quit. Don't quit. He kept saying don't quit. So powerful. Until you get to the very end of this thing, don't you quit. Until the Lord has released you, until you're on the other side of that field, don't you quit. Don't you quit. You've got to keep going. I know it hurts, but keep going. It'll be worth it.
And when that blindfold comes off of you, you're going to turn around and you're going to see how far that you have come. So, listen, God is not unaware of this circumstance that you're in, of this environment that you're in. He is fully aware. He is fully capable of equipping you with every single thing that you need to get through this. So you allow the Lord to walk you through this thing, and He'll carry you when you're too weak to stand. And uh, I tell you, hallelujah, He'll do it. He'll do it. He's faithful. He sees right where you are. And I'm telling you, things like this don't last forever. And I, I believe that, you know, the Lord, when it's time, He can open that door. He'll make a way of escape. If the temptation is too great, you know, He will make a way. He'll punch a hole in the wall if He needs to, you know. Um, but anyway, you just keep holding on to the Lord. And you got to walk in His way, be obedient to His Word. If you're praying and you're asking God for an escape, but you're not abiding by everything in this book. If you're walking in sin, you need to get rid of it. You've, you've got to get rid of anything that separates you from that closeness with the Lord. And uh, if you truly are serious about walking this way with the Lord, you need to lay it all down at His feet. Ask Him to show you anything that's there that shouldn't be. And uh, just just allow the Lord uh, to, to purge you and, and to... Uh, rid you of everything that's not of him and i'm telling you he will direct your every step he will be your guide he will be your strength and your comfort and everything that you need if you allow him so i don't know if um you know i don't know if there's anything in that 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 would help you uh, i wish i could say more um give more advice more scriptures but that's what i have to say and i know i've already taken you know uh, quite a bit of time on this so um I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to do some more coming up pretty soon. Um, you know, maybe on some other subjects that y'all asked. And I will do more singing videos. But anyway, but listen. Like I said, he's not unaware. He's going to equip you with what you need. And uh, you may be that very person by the life that you live to lead your family to the Lord. I'm not promising because people have their own choice. They can make their own decision in the life and the choices that they make. But but you, remember like I said at the very beginning, you are responsible for you and how you live, how you respond. And let it be God flowing through you. Not your flesh, but let the Spirit have full control. Alright, so hopefully that encouraged you. I love you guys. God bless.